Good morning. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Andre Bisset, religious brother of the Holy Cross Order. And so as we come to recognize the ways that Lord used him in his humble service to the community, we are called to recognize the ways God calls us into that same relationship. So we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace and love of God our Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. My sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we are called to be mindful of God's grace for us. Lord, you are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You come to call sinners Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Lord our God, friend of the lowly, who gave your servant St. Andre Bisset a great devotion to St. Joseph, and a special commitment to the poor and the afflicted, Help us through his intercession to follow the example of his prayer life and love and to come to share with him in your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you and you to the Holy Spirit and God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one have, has ever seen God. Yet, if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testified that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God God remains in him, and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love of God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God, and God in him. In this is love brought to perfection among us, that we have confidence on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And so one who fears is not yet perfect in love. The word of the Lord. Amen. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O oh God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice, justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted one with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. A reading from Holy Gospel according to Mark. I'm sorry, the Lord be with you. After the 5,000 had eaten their satisfied, Jesus made his disciples get up and into the boat and proceed him on the other side towards Bethsaida. While he dismissed the crowds, and when he had taken leave of them, he went off to the mountain to pray. When evening 
The boat was far away out to the sea, and he was alone on the shore. Then he saw that they were tossed about while rowing, for the wind was against them. After the fourth watch of the night, he came towards them walking on the sea. He meant to pass them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought he was a ghost and cried out. And they had seen him and were terrified. But at once he spoke to them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. He got into the boat with them and the wind died down and they were completely astounded. They had not understood the incident of the loaves. On the contrary, their hearts were hardened. The Gospel of the Lord. So, you know my dry humor, and they say that really what happened, it wasn't written down in Scripture, but when Jesus meant to pass them by, he said, oh, didn't you know about the stones? He was walking on the stones on the sea. Ah. So, that was told to me by a Holy Cross father, by the way, so on feast day of Andrew Bisset. Um, yeah, he was a retreat director and kind of was trying to throw some humor out there. But um, today, as we celebrate his feast day, uh, his, his feast goes along with the readings of the day because Andre Reset was um, a brother of the community. Uh, he was ordained, he, not ordained, but he was received into the community uh, long after he had hoped to get in because at first was rejected. But then um, a bishop made a plea for his cause and the community later decide to accept him and welcome him in as a, as a brother. And as such, he, he lived as one who served the lowly and the poor. And it's said that actually he would go out and visit them and he'd take some of the oil from the lamp. At the time, lamps burned with oil, the lamp of the sanctuary. He'd take some of that oil, not using it as anointing like a priest would, but he'd bless the people who were sick in the name of St. Joseph. And he had a great patronage to St. Joseph. And the people would get better. Matter of fact, when there was a plague in the area, St. Andre went around to all the poor in the area who were, who were afflicted by it and, and healed them. And he took no credit for that because he said it was, it was the work of Jesus through St. Joseph, who was his patron. And his great love for St. Joseph was such that he wanted to build a chapel for him in his time. And uh, the head of the community didn't think it was possible. But after the, 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 the plague and after the seeing all the ways that Andre Bisset worked, the people of the community called him a living saint because of his holiness and his dedication to them. And that he was able to build an or oratory to uh, St. Joseph, and then later dying in the early 1900s. Um, because of the appeal of so many people writing and the investigations, Pope John Paul beatified him, and Pope Benedict made him a saint. So today as we celebrate him, we celebrate this, this great wonderment. I remember, I remember being at Rome, I think, for his, for his beatification. Uh, under under John, John Paul, and because uh, I can remember they, they have these big tapestries that they make of the saint, and and they're actually woven out of wool and stuff, so that it's used one time, but still it's it, it's a it's a big uh, image of them that rolls down off the side of the of the basilica of Saint Peter's on the column, so that people can see who it is that the Pope is elevating in recognition of them. Uh, so, as we celebrate the memory of him and his simplicity of life, never wanting to be declared a saint, he always denied that. He said, it's the work of God through me, it is not me. And I think the reality is that we all have that same gift if we believe in it, if we open ourselves to it. 
the reality of the work of God through us that can help other people in their need by being willing to maybe intercede through St. Joseph or intercede through a saint and ask they have a particular saint to help that person in their need to intercede for them, to help them to have courage to trust in the Lord in their time of need, and the Lord to heal them or to help them in their need, whatever that is. All of us have that gift of intercession, and that's what said he said he did. Yet, as I said before, the, the people of the area called him a living saint. Uh, when he died, thousands of people passed his casket, uh, which was laid out in front of the oratory, and um, he had been honored by so many who he touched their lives. And uh, today, as we celebrate his feast day, and we celebrate him as a Holy Cross brother, recognize the, the work of the order in his time as well as in our time today. May we always be courageous in trying to follow his example. Uh, I can remember one time preaching on sainthood, and I remember a woman coming to me after Mass, and she said, she was angry with me. She said, how dare you try to call me a saint? I said, I didn't call you a saint. So we all have the potential of becoming saints. We have the, all the potential of becoming like Mother Teresa of Calcutta, like St. Andrew of Asset, like whoever it is that we admire as a saint in the church. And it's like denying God's love for us if we do that. Because God wants us to be saints one day in heaven. As John Paul I said, we are all working towards that. If we are open to it. If we are trying to live it. If we are trying to be the lampstands of God's witness in this world. Whatever the charism or the gift that it is, we are called to. Like St. Andre has said. Amen. Today we turn to the Lord in our day and we ask him to hear us as we call upon his name. We pray today for the order of the Holy Cross brothers and fathers who are still uh, very active in the work throughout the world. That the Lord may continue to help them to prosper, we pray to the Lord. As they celebrate the life of St. Andrew Bessette, that they may give thanks to God for his witness of the community life that he achieved, we pray to the Lord. We pray today for the ways that we are called to holiness. We may be open to the ways that God fosters that in us, and we may be open to how we are called not just to see and believe, but to find ways to act upon it, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have no courage in their hearts or their lives to pray, or to know how to pray. That the Lord might help them in their needs, we pray to the Lord. We pray this day for Joan and Aki Kopek, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. We pray also for our nation and our world, and all the needs that we have with the coronavirus and with the tensions that exist, that the Lord may help us to be prayerful witnesses of the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. We pray for an end to the coronavirus, that the vaccines may become more available and people might be able to receive them and that we may be able to resume our former way of life, whatever that may be, however that may be. We pray to the Lord. 
And for the prayers are in the silence of each one of our hearts. We pray the Lord. Father of mercy, hear the prayer of your people this day as we honor the life of Saint Beset. May we also honor the ways that you call us to imitate your love that he had for you, the love that he had for Saint Joseph, the foster and patron of workers. We ask all things through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given the human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread, wine to offer, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, and we come for us our spiritual drink. O God, who bestow the light of the nations, grant that your people may be guided to everlasting peace and to pour on our hearts the brightness of your love, which you gave to St. Andre, by which you purified our minds and the minds of our fathers in faith. The Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For Saint Andre consecrated his life to Christ for the sake of the kingdom. It is right to celebrate the wonder of your privilege by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to the experience on earth that gives the promise of a new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you without end as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You indeed are holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice once more and gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. 
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered in one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Holy Father, Gregory John, the Archbishop, Joe and Bernard, his brother bishops, and all your clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome into life your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Spouse St. Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Andrew Bissett, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For the through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We turn to the Father confident in his love for us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. We offer to one another that sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who has come to take away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. For everyone watching, please join in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May your people, O Lord, to whom you guide and sustain in many ways, experience both now and in the future the remedies which you bestow, that with the needs of solace and the things that pass away from the things of eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father and Son, Holy Spirit. Let's go forth this day to love, serve, to know the Lord. St. Andrew Bissett, pray for us.